Let me tell you right now, because you might need to hear this. Whoa, whoa, I cannot believe I'm making this freaking video right now. I feel like I've, I just can't believe that I can make this video right now. If you've been following my journey, if you're subscribed to my channel, you already know that I am pregnant and I got pregnant through IVF. You already know the gender of my little BB as well, my Vidibur. My husband and I are having a baby boy that is due in February. So I really, really wanted to make videos during my pregnancy so that I can document it and I can go back and look at it with future pregnancies, but also for people who might be searching these things on the internet, just for like a little bit of peace of mind, a little bit of validation. I know that everybody's body is different and I really wanna start this video by saying that. Everybody's body is different. I had a few symptoms that were straight up hard symptoms, very obvious symptoms, but everything else I'm gonna mention are just mentionable. If you experience no symptoms in your two week wait, that is completely normal. It does not mean you're out. Also the fact that I had an embryo transfer done, like it just, it wasn't a guessing game for me. So I feel like I had the chance to like accurately reflect on how I was feeling at that time. For me, it's not really like a two week wait because we did get our beta blood draw, which tells you like the pregnancy level. And I'm gonna share my beta numbers with you as well because I know when I was going through IVF and I was looking for like early pregnancy stuff, I just so badly like wanted to know other people's beta numbers as well. So I'm gonna be sharing all that information. I'm gonna share everything I can with you, even the TMI stuff. So TMI warning. That's just how it's gonna be around here. We're, we're all women, we all have bodies, we all know how they work, it's gonna be okay. So the day of the transfer, I felt completely normal. Um, I was like laughing a lot. I don't know if it's because I was just so relieved that it happened and we, are done, we were done with it. Or maybe I was just like so happy for a change, but I was literally laughing so much and I actually like googled online about like laughing the day of your transfer if you could like laugh out your embryo or like push too hard because I was like literally cracking up and it actually said that it helps implantation so if you're trying to conceive I highly recommend whether you do an embryo transfer or if you know about the time of ovulation or a few days after ovulation where you could be implanting watch funny movies <laughs> and laugh your ass off. And then the day after my transfer, this was like a really hard mental day for me. So I woke up and I had a lot of my mind. Um, my mind was wandering. Um, I had like really negative thoughts. I was in a really bad mood. I think like the cloud from the transfer kind of like wore off a little bit. And then this, the feeling of like, oh shit, like this could possibly not work kind of like set in. And then I did have a little bit of cramps the day after transfer, like around seven o'clock after dinner time. And then I was a little bit gassy, but I mean, that could have just been like what I ate. Day two, because transfer day counts as zero. And then the day after transfer is day one. And then day two and day three. So transfer day technically is zero. So day two, so this is two days past transfer, not including transfer day. Um, I woke up at 4.30 in the morning, and this has kind of been like a common theme with me. It's happened like several times, but this was the first night that it happened. I woke up at 4.30 in the morning, I had to pee, and I was freaking starving. Like, I was starving, sis. Let me tell you, like, I was full on ready for breakfast at 4.30 in the morning. Um, and I actually just like went to the couch because I had woken up so early. Um, I had a really, really bad headache and I had like lower back pain and hip pain, but that is because of my progesterone injections. I don't think it had anything to do with the embryo or, you know, being pregnant. It was definitely from the progesterone injections. And then this was the first big symptom for me. And it was later in the day and I'm pretty sure I felt implantation the day following, but later in the day, after day two, I got, this is one of my big symptoms that was very obvious to me. I got severely, severely thirsty. I still am to this day, but this 
thirst in particular was like, I had to have water. I felt like I hadn't had water in days. I felt like I was in the freaking Sahara Desert. And that was like a biggie, biggie to me. Like I'm really great at drinking water. I'm always hydrated. And I felt extremely dehydrated. I was like cotton mouth. I could not get enough water. And that was one of my big symptoms that I noticed that was completely obvious. I was dying of thirst and I still am. So I will say that that's an obvious symptom for me. And then the next day after that, again, this might be a little TMI, but I think it's important that I share the things that not very many people talk about. So in pregnancy, and this can happen like pretty early because of like, you know, your hormones are changing, hormones are running wild. I've heard other people talk about this, so I know I'm not crazy. I was starting to have like some dreams, but they were quite erotic. <laughs> In my sleep, I felt like things were happening down there and as it was like building in my sleep, it woke me up because it was a fierce burning pain in the center of my uterus. It was like a, a burning pool. Like I can't even say that it was a cramp. Like it wasn't a cramp. I would say that it was like a pool and it just like burned and it was like five seconds and then it stopped. And I was just like, what the heck? Looking back, I was like, dude, was that implantation? Cause it definitely felt like something was implanting. It was that like deep pain, like a, a deep burning pool on my uterus. And then the next day, day four after transfer, um, my teeth were kind of sore, my teeth kind of hurt. And that was a little weird. Um, but like I said, it's just, getting a mention it wasn't that was like oh my god it's a huge symptom i'm dying my teeth hurt it was just something that was like oh i have sensitive teeth today that's a little weird didn't last forever it's, it's not happening now and then this day this is another one of my really noticeable symptoms and it hits me like a ton of bricks several times i had a headache from the depths of hell and i think that's kind of why i was like this is a symptom of a new hormone in my body or hormones rising or something because I'm not a headache person. I don't get headaches and this was the biggest headache and like on a normal day, I'm very like, I'd rather like treat things with like essential oils or food. But on this day, I had to take extra strength Tylenol for the majority of the day and it didn't even help. Like it was beyond any headache I've ever experienced in my life. And I actually posted on an IVF support group on Facebook and I was like, hey guys, I'm four days after my transfer and I have a splitting headache. Like it's kind of worrying me. And there was so many women that commented below on my thread that were saying that the excruciating headache was the first sign for them that implantation occurred and i was like oh my god maybe i did feel implantation yesterday on top of the really really bad headache i also just felt like like hungover that's probably like the best way to describe it just like the worst hangover crummy with my headache and thirsty it was like i partied hard the night before which obviously i didn't and then day five i just put that i was slightly gaggy so I wouldn't say that I was nauseous. I would say that I maybe at this point had like a food aversion or two um, to like things that I was like making for dinner and it was just kind of like, ugh, like I would have rather had like a snow cone or <laughs> something a little, you know, like cold and refreshing, just like some things like warm foods made me a little bit like, eh, like I'd rather not eat it. And then my headache was completely gone. So that was five days after transfer. And then on day six, I got my first positive pregnancy test that morning, six days after transfer, which makes sense. At the time I was like, oh my God, it's only been six days and I'm getting a positive test. I have twins, but it makes sense because I put a six day embryo in me and it had been six days. So this was about 12 DPO. So it would have just been a few days before 
any normal person's expected period was to come. So I can show you the test. Let me go get him. Ha ha, look here. Yeah, I tested a lot. Okay, we need to talk about that too because I'm gonna give you a little lecture on testing a whole bunch. If you watched my Finding Out I'm Pregnant vlog, then you can see this six days after transfer test like right when I took it, it's kind of old now, so if you like really wanna see like a fresh look at the test, definitely go back to that video, but kind of gross now because it's old, but this was my six day after transfer test. Yeah, it's kind of like old and faded and gross now. Obviously it is pee pee. <laughs> and then on eight DPO, I tested again in the morning just to make sure that it was getting darker and this was my eight days past transfer test so it was getting darker this is an old test i do have a line progression in my other videos so oh also on that day excruciating headache came back so i was just thirsty and lethargic that is the two things that i can tell you that i was right away and still am thirsty and lethargic haven't mentioned anything about puking when people say that they puke in the two week wait, I'm kind of like, how? I mean, maybe if you have twins, but then I don't know. It's just so early guys. If you're not like, if you're not hugging the toilet, don't feel bad. You're technically like really, I don't feel like you're supposed to be right now, but maybe some people do. Day nine, I felt great. I put feeling great, tons of energy. <laughs> so I just felt like my normal self that day and I had a lot of energy and I just felt really good. And then is the start of my week four of pregnancy and it was also day 10, which was my first bl blood draw at my fertility clinic. So the morning before my blood draw, I tested again just to make sure I was still pregnant. <laughs> and it was still super pregnant and darker than my eight, not DPO, DPT, my eight days past transfer. So obviously I was feeling really good going into my blood test, but on the other hand, like I know that getting a positive blood draw is what I want. It's everything that I had been dreaming of. It's everything that I could ever want going through IVF. I was so thankful that our first embryo transfer worked. Like I would look at the test and be like, dude, I'm freaking pregnant. But then also on the other hand, I was really nervous about the blood level. So I feel like when you go through this process, nothing there's nothing so solid or there's not a number high enough to validate everything that you've been through and give you the peace of mind that you need. There's just not. And I have times where I feel like really guilty about that because I know I need to be grateful, but you know, trauma from my past and a little bit of trauma throughout the process, it just really, really puts you in a place. So. I was just really nervous for that blood draw level. I wanted it to be high. So whenever you go get your blood drawn, any level over 25 is a is considered pregnant. And last year when I got pregnant and had a miscarriage, my first blood draw came back at 30. So yes, technically I was pregnant and the nurse had to tell me like your blood draw came back at 30, anything over 25 is considered pregnant. So you're pregnant, but hindsight like, that is such a low number. I was only five over what they even consider pregnant. Now, I'm not saying that other women don't go on to have like higher beta tests where they like exponentially grow, but that just wasn't the case for mine last year. So I was really nervous this time and I just didn't want to hear a low number. I didn't know that I, if I could handle that, you know, because then after you hear a low number, you gotta wait days in between your next blood draw. And that is one way to really, really torture somebody <laughs> and torture yourself. I mean, it's just, it's just awful. So like, I was just hoping that I would get a high number and get peace of mind. And my first HCG blood draw came back at 325. 325. That was such a relief for me because I told myself, before they called me, I told myself, okay, if I could at least get 100 on my first blood draw, I will be happy, okay? Like I told myself, if I could at least get one, a 100 on my blood draw, I would feel 
solid pregnant and happy. And it came back at 325 and I was just over the moon. But we'll get into the butt in just a second. So day 11, this was after my blood test, I was tired napped, the usual, um, and my headache returned later in the day. So like I said, I had a headache and I was freaking lethargic, okay, and thirsty, and that's like what my life was. Um, and then day 12, I put, I felt pretty normal today, but food aversions may be starting. So this was the day where I realized that like, I wasn't really wanting to eat dinner. It had happened a time before, like I mentioned, but like now it was just like, there's no way I'm going to eat dinner. I started to not want any warm foods at all. Like if it was a warm dinner, I could not freaking stand it. So I went and got a bunch of stuff for salads. Like all I wanted was like cold food. So I would like have salads with like carrots, cucumber, ranch dip, just like very cold, refreshing food foods. I probably ate like five pounds of cherries, um, like fresh cherries from the produce and also Bahama Buck snow cones. Like those were the three things that I like couldn't get enough of. That was like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I think I just wanted like really cold refreshing foods because I was so freaking thirsty. Like the thought of a warm meal just started to kill me at that point. So, and then day 13 is whenever I started to have some sore boobs and some sore nipples. And then I made a boo-boo, a very big, stupid, stupid mistake. And I'm going to be the one to tell you not to do this. After I got my first positive blood result, 10 days after my transfer, the day I got my first positive blood result, I should have stopped testing. They tell you all the time, like after you get a positive beta, stop testing, like you don't need a test. But I tested again. And this was at 13 days past transfer. And the line wasn't darker. If anything, it looked a little lighter. So I started freaking out. I was paralyzed in fear. I was convinced something bad was gonna happen. I was texting all my friends, all my family. I told Matt, like my pregnancy test isn't any darker. Like I'm freaking out. I'm like bracing myself for the worst at this point, which isn't good for your baby and not good for yourself. Um, let me tell you right now, cause you might need to hear this. Pregnancy tests job solely is to detect if there is HCG in your system, which is the hormone that the, the embryo gives off. If an embryo is there, if not how much, so the pregnancy test job is not to tell you how much or the level of HCG is in your urine. And I knew this in the back of my head, Matt kept telling me that, but I, I already did it. I already did the test. I saw it wasn't as dark or it wasn't darker and I freaking spiraled. So please do not make the same mistake as me. Um, it's gonna tell you if there's HCG in your system, but these things, yes, they're reliable, yes, they're dependable, but not at a level of, oh, I sh the, the line should be perfectly darker, or um, it's gonna tell me if I have this much HCG in my system. They're not that smart. I mean, they're like eight bucks a piece when you break them down. This test at 13 days was not necessary, and it just caused me, caused me pain and stress. And it turns out that my blood levels had increased from 325 to 895. But this was over a span of four days. So if you watch my vlog, I was freaking the F out because this was not your typical, as they say your HCG level should double every 48 hours. And whenever I put like my betas in this little online like beta calculator, it was doubling every 66 hours. So it's, that's slower. I should have got a higher beta for the second beta and I was flipping. And then I had some tiny cramps. Well, I just told you day 14. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and save anything past day 14 because technically that's, I guess like two week wait, but I should have stopped at day 10. But I wanted to give you all the way through day 14. And then I have every other day up until this point logged in my notes because I do wanna do pregnancy updates every 
two weeks. So the next pregnancy update that I'm gonna do is weeks four through five, and then I'll just do like every two weeks at a time, and then six, seven, and then eight, nine, and so on. So yeah, that's what you can expect from me. I'm definitely gonna be like doing my regular vlogs, hauls, you know, you know, just just be me, be Michelle. If you've been around here for a while, then you know how it goes. We have fun, we're honest, we're nice to each other, we don't judge, and uh, yeah, that's what is gonna happen. But I am excited to sprinkle these little pregnancy videos in here and there. Okay guys, so that is it for my two week weight symptoms after IVF. I'm so grateful, I feel so blessed. I oftentimes feel a little undeserving when I know that I deserve it and I know that Matt deserves it, but I just think about people out there that are still waiting for their positive and just waiting for their baby and it almost makes me just feel horrible that it's happening to me, but I'm just so relieved that it is at the same time. It's the weirdest feeling ever, but let me tell you that if you are still waiting on your positive and you're going through the journey, maybe you're in the thick of it, um, don't give up. I'm I'm here for you and I'm here with you and I'm thinking about you every single day. I will say that I never thought that I would be in this situation. I never thought that I would be pregnant. And I just had a lot of obstacles going against me. And look at look now. <laughs> it's just amazing and it's crazy. But I hope that this gives you a lot of hope because if it happened for me and I got through it, it can happen for you. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'll be there if you reach out to me.